And I think this is a prime time to relinquish the podium and turn the mic over to another voice. So please join me in welcoming MLA for Timberley Prospect, former cabinet minister and premier, the Honorable Ian Rankin. Thank you very much, Sherry. It's uh, really uh, nice to be here again. Um, I want to uh, begin by acknowledging that we are on Mi'kma'ki, the traditional and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Um, my pronouns are he, him, and today uh, I was going to be wearing a suit. It's a little, a little warm outside, um, but I do have a, a tie on, a purple and blue tie. I have reddish, uh, brownish, and uh, more and more so the uh, type of highlights, uh, the wisdom highlights that, that Sherry has referenced, uh, especially since I turned uh, 40 this year. And so um, certainly getting a little bit older and, and, and seeing those. Uh, but it's always great to be invited by, uh, by the group. Uh, I spoke at this last year in Dartmouth. Nice to be a little closer to my office, uh, less than a kilometer actually. And, and Beachville is where my uh, uh, constituency office is. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here during Accessibility Awareness Week. I want to thank first the, the Partnership for Access Awareness Nova Scotia, including all the wonderful organizations uh, that are part of that alliance. And of course, uh, the Nova Scotia League for, uh, for uh, what is it, the um, Equality of Opportunities, uh, NS Leo, that, that Sherry heads up. And I want to thank the uh, sponsors uh, that actually make this possible, the, uh, the, the donations, the uh, scholarships, that are funded by good corporate citizens of our province. I was thinking about uh, this today when I first became uh, an ally and advocate for uh, diverse abilities issues in my community as the MLA. Uh, and it really goes back to the day I was elected. Uh, some of the schools, the local schools didn't have uh, really any, any real uh, meaningful accessibility for our students to, to even get into the front doors. Uh, to get to the second level of our uh, elementary school uh, and fighting uh, within government. I was a government member to, to have stair lifts and door openers and things that are just the basics of accessibility being installed. And uh, over the, the next number of years, helping uh, the parent-teacher organizations uh, ensure that they had the funding required from, from the province uh, to install the first, to my knowledge, fully inclusive uh, playground just down the road at our BLT uh, junior elementary school that's now in place. Uh, during that ter first term, when I was yet to be, in, it was mentioned I was in cabinet, eventually premier, but my first term, I was actually uh, a backbencher, so-called, and I met Sherry and a number of advocates at a luncheon uh, downtown at the uh, what was the older convention center during uh, this very week, would have been in 2014 or 15. And I was just uh, at awe of all the work that, that so many organizations do across this province, the strength of the organizations and the things that they uh, have, have fought for over a number of years, uh, to pushing the province and the city, especially a province and a city as old as ours to start making changes yesterday. And so I was proud when I ran uh, for an MLA that was, that had, when we ran for that in 2013, and we formed government, we had a very important part of our platform, and that was eventually the passing of Bill 59. Uh, that was a highlight for me. It was something that uh, Speaker Kevin Murphy uh, advocated for very strongly, uh, and also Minister Joanne Bernard, who was here, uh, who was Minister of Community Services at the time. That, that was an exciting time for us, and it was a highlight of being uh, part of that government that that passed that legislation. So. Uh, I know that that very much was driven by community, uh, what, making sure that their voice was heard. And so we have that enshrined in legislation and it's, and it's great to have that plan. Uh, but now we need to move forward with the planning and the implementation. It's fine to have that in place, but it's really important that we include uh, the voices that were part of developing the actual legislation uh, in term and making sure that it's implemented with those voices, hence the saying nothing for us without us. Uh, and I think of that saying when I see what's going on right now with the with the strike that was mentioned by by Sherry and uh, the awful uh, disproportionate impacts that that's having uh, with students 
with disabilities and the access to education that they don't have. And so uh, rest assured that our caucus supports uh, the workers that provide these vital services to, to people that need them. And we want to make sure that our, our voices are heard alongside the workers and the students to, to hopefully uh, cajole the government to get back to the table as soon as possibly. Um, because we just don't understand uh, how this could be going on for so long with kids not having the access to the education that they have a right to. Uh, that legislation that we passed, I think Nova Scotia should be proud of. I think it's one of the opportunities that we have. We've led in many different ways uh, across the country, and I think that this is something that can uh, be further expanded across our whole country. And I think the only way that that is going to happen is the voice of the youth. And that brings us to the, the context of what we're here for today and ensuring that we recognize the accomplishments and the efforts of our young people. Um, no matter what it is in terms of progressive movements across society, they're driven by young people, whether it's the environment, whether it's social justice, uh, fighting for equity, um inclusivity young people are the people that that drive this change um and so all of you receiving these uh scholarships today have to drive that change these are the types of things that drove me to serve the public in the way that i do now i was less than 30 years old when i uh, was proud to win the nomination to run in this area in Timberley Prospect. And these are the things that continue to drive me to serve the public. I know I am proud of, just as proud as you, as I was the 12 young people that received their scholarships last year. And I know you will do great things. You have all written about wanting to be working in medical fields, teaching, business, social work, accounting, engineering, the arts, conservation, how critically important these are to our province right now. If I read that list to any of my colleagues that you've expressed in your biographies and your applications, they would say these are exactly the fields that will make our province better. Some of you are going to be involved in sports, I understand, and in music, and are already involved in, in many volunteer organizations. And I am so proud of the work that you're already doing and the causes that you are beginning to champion at a, long, a, champion at a young age. You already are public servants. And I believe you've already shown the desire to be good citizens. And to being a good citizen, Keep, with that involves responsibility to be informed, to speak up, and to be kind, to advocate for the change that you want to see. So in closing to the recipients, Aaliyah, Drew, Braden, Angelina, Emily, Courtney, Faith, Emma, Xander, Yas, Victoria, and Kira, I am proud of you, and please let me know how you get along in the future with your future endeavors. Do not be afraid to challenge the status quo. Don't be afraid to change your mind from time to time. And certainly don't be afraid to follow your dreams. Great things only happen when people stand up for what is right and what is just. Thank you.